Uh, it's basically midwinter here. We're getting toward the end of January, and uh, you know, there's a lot of focus on deer habitat, habitat improvements, and people making improvements on their land, and especially in the form of planting. We have great time for frost seeding right now if you have open soil. And, um, and certainly everyone's placing their tree orders and really wanted to get back to, you know, what is the best tree for your land and, and what tree you should be planting on your land. I, I saw a discussion on Facebook on one of the forums and I don't pay attention to, to that too much other than if I can get on there and try to help out a little bit, but I just don't have time with uh, all the discussions that take place on the YouTube channel, my Facebook channel, Instagram, and uh, you know, a lot of back and forth and discussion on those. So really, what is the best tree for your land? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna reveal what I think is the best tree towards the end. Um, but I wanna go through some of the real important trees that, that folks are planting on their land and really how it benefits them. And, uh, and the first one I'm gonna talk about is uh, anything that has to do with hard mass. You know, there's, there's a lot of people planting chestnuts in the south, I think that's awesome. Chestnuts can almost form like an apple tree and, uh, and produce a lot of nuts quickly. Unfortunately, when we get up here into the northern areas of Wisconsin, Michigan, you get to a zone where it's really hard to keep them alive. Their root system gets frosted out. So if you don't have those deep snows, they might even survive for a couple of years. And then all of a sudden, we don't have a lot of snow. We have a lot of cold and it kills the trees. So that's the one bad thing about chestnuts. Acorns, uh, you know, I always think it's admirable uh, planting to get uh, white oaks planted on your property. Um, even red oak and you're looking towards the future, you know, decades down the road. Beech nut, I've been on public land where some beech nut hunting has been incredible. Um, you know, where they didn't have that mass crop of acorns, any kind of chestnut, anything like that. So they're really hitting those beech nuts hard. And, uh, and that could be a hidden gem on, on a big public land property when you find uh, beech nuts located in a, in a real tight area of five or 10 acres and uh, that are given a lot of, say, federal land, public land, state land, where they're giant and they're huge and they're producing a lot of uh, nuts per acre can be excellent. But any of those three by themselves, they are only a complement to high quality trees and a high quality woody browse. And once you think about each one of those, acorns, they might not even give you acorn crops every year at the same time. Acorns might be available even if they are plentiful for a month. Um, I've seen a lot of stands of white oak on public land where those acorns were gone within a month, within two or three weeks. Those deer are just gobbling them up into September down in Ohio or wherever it was at. And they really, even if they had great production, they weren't lasting very long. So a hard mass cannot drive and influence your daily deer herd and your property all season long. In fact, no tree really can. Uh, you really need that high quality food source. But when it comes to those three hard mass, think of those as being a great complement to great trees that are already there, and especially back in a deer's bedding area. You really want those in bedding. I see far too many people planting oaks, chestnuts, and other hard mass, basically roughage. They turn into roughage, woody browse. It's hard to digest, no different than briars and uh, woody shrub tips, hardwood regeneration. So think of those as a, of a different class. You're really looking at putting those back in your bedding areas and to complement your woods and the holding a, attraction of your woods in those situations and not the food source. That brings me to soft mass. Soft mass, mass trees, whether it's crab apples, pears, persimmons, plums, whatever it might be. Crab apples are incredible. Um, they can put a lot of volume together. I love soft mass trees. I love keeping them with high quality food sources because they are high quality food. Um, I like putting, as opposed to the hard mass back in the bedding areas and complement bedding area and daytime roughage. I look at soft mass as complementing food plots and adding another high powered attraction to those food plots. And especially when you plant a variety of several different species of soft mass trees or even small little orchards on the north side of your food plots so that are getting a lot of sun. I definitely like to put those by stand locations to and from food sources, and they can be that one-stop shop right before they hit a food source near a water hole, a mock scrape, where you can really set up a little private area where deer are honing in on just before they step out into a big food plot, where if you hunted on the food plot edge, you might spook those deer. So hunt an inside corner, hunt 50 yards off the edge with a, with a cluster of apple trees, and, uh, and they can be an exceptional complement to a great food plot program. But again, just like hard mass, 
those soft mat trees are only available for a short period of time, whether it's a month or two months, even three months, and you can't build a deer herd and a daily attraction to those because again, there'll be holes. And even if you have hard mass in the bedding areas, and then you have soft mass out by food sources, they're only lasting for a couple months. So you can't take a deer herd and actually complement an entire season's worth of attraction but boy, they can sure be a compliment for a short period of time. They can help your bedding areas. They can help your food plots, depending on hard mass or soft mass. And I would look at those as separate. Again, soft mass out in your food plots, your high quality areas, food source areas where deer are hitting that third feeding of the day out of five. Again, feedings one and two take place in the bedding areas. The third feeding I refer to is an hour before dark. And then there's feedings four and five that are after dark and in the night and when you have ag land that's a great way to send your deer off to that ag land for the fourth and fifth seeding feeding but really between hard mass and soft mass you're looking at a complement to feedings one and two in the bedding areas and three on a food plot that brings me to conifers conifers are an exceptional tree to complement habitat and to complement bedding habitat Conifers are one of the four bedding types, base bedding types, including grasses, weeds, briars, conifers, shrubs, and then hardwood regeneration. Those are the four bedding com components in the whitetail world that I recognize, you know, years ago. And so I've been writing about that and speaking about it for a long time. But those are the four bedding types that I see that I recognize and I, that I talk about. And conifers can be a great complement because there's a lot of properties out there that are hardwood, softwood. They don't have a lot of conifers on them. And conifers help you diminish the wind, increase thermal protection on the land, increase snow hindrance. And they also are soundproofing habitat, meaning that they'll break down your hunter access sound, getting into stands, walking to stands, departing from stands. And as you travel on your property, if you have conifers, it keeps, it soaks up that sound, keeps it from going through. The opposite would be big hardwoods, where you have hardwoods, even if you cut hardwoods, make hardwood, bedding areas you still need to add those conifers I, I recommend 50 to 100 trees per acre even in hardwood bedding areas hardwood hinge cuts hardwood timber harvest where you start to diversify your land and uh and then offer that that thermal protection and screening protection side protection where no matter how old those hardwoods get after they've been cut you always have those conifers but i recommend in a lot of locations in the north you're putting uh white spruce or white pine tuck them back into your cuttings and your tops and debris so that you're caging them. They can grow back in the shade. If you're out in open areas, Norway spruce can be great. They can be great for edging up plots along with switchgrass and shrubs. And then red cedar are a great complement on a lot of properties out in the open. Um, we have this red cedar right next to me, beside me. And uh, this is a great example of a quality uh, tree that you can plant for cover that grows just about anywhere. Once it gets above the weeds, they really start to shoot up. They grow in the cracks of rocks along the road. But again, if you just have conifers, if you just have hardwood mass crop, hard mass crop, and then if you have soft mass, you can't really build a whitetail parcel around there. And that gets me to the fourth and final type of tree. And it's a class of trees or a group of trees. I refer to them as hardwood regeneration. And you can include shrub tips in here. You can include briars in this because regeneration, woody shrub tips, woody brows. And I'm not talking about woody brows that are in the form of chestnuts and uh, acorns. They're not woody brows, but those are in the same class as that they're hard to digest. They're hardwood, they're, um, they want soft mass. They want greens to wash them down. But you need woody regen. You need woody shrub tips. You need briars in your bedding areas. The thing about that is as soon as it gets to October, November, and the weeds are dying, and the deer don't have a lot to feed on, and you might have snow, whatever it is, then they're gonna have that woody browse and woody regeneration for six months. And that supplies what they need in the off season. Could be even a clear cut. Could be timber harvest on your land. It could be hinge cuts that you maintain indefinitely. A lot of people are mistaken where they think that a hinge cut, once you make it, then it's, then it's dead. I only recommend about 30% uh, of the properties I go to, maybe 25 actually have hinge cuts, but you can maintain them for decades to come. So don't let anyone tell you different on that. And that could be a great form of hard regeneration where you're just in there every few years and you're hinging or tying back that growth off the side. Again, you want hinge cuts that are low. You really rarely ever want them high unless you're screening off in a distance that you need that high hinge cut for. But really back in bedding areas, you want hinge cuts that are waist high 
because you want side cover and then you want that food value where they can get their head on. Those deer need that six months. They need all fall and winter of harder regeneration. Long before acorns are available or chestnuts and long after soft mass is available, then that woody browse can supply that need for hard re regeneration and woody, woody regeneration, woody browse all the way through the entire fall and winter. That's a constant. That's something you can have on your land all the time. It's something you can depend on. And then you take the soft mass for a complement to food plots because of food plots. Again, you want your food plots to last the entire season too. Just like apple trees, if they're only available for a couple months or a month, acorns are only available for a month or two, chestnuts the same. If they're only available for a short period of time, you can never drive, you can never build a daily do deer movement. And so therefore you're never gonna be able to build a good herd, a good hunt um, on private land. Now public land, they can be the, the driving food source, especially when they complement a big clear cut area, then some type of hard mass in that woody clear cut area can be what drives the food source for the entire year. And you can hunt around just like a uh, big giant cornfield. But on private land, my favorite tree is gonna be anything that provides woody regeneration that you can cut. For example, I have a poplar tree behind me, a couple along the fence row. An acre poplar, you can produce 7,000 shoots per acre. And that's all cover and all food. And even in northern areas, that food lasts for seven, eight years before it gets high. You can go in and mow it all down again. If it's two, three inches diameter, you can mow it down with a forestry head on a bobcat or a lot of chainsaw work and get those regeneration roots to come. The poplar regenerates or aspen, it regenerates from the lateral root system and that's why you get so many shoots. And then you look at other hardwood species for maple, cherry. There's a lot of talk of you, you cut that tree down, you produce 200 shoots coming out of that trunk and what a great spot for an attraction for a deer. It's like candy. Yes, it is. But one deer, two deer, three deer can eat down the growth of that going into the fall and winter just in a few hours in one day. They can eat it right down. So there's a lot of people going out there right now where I'm going to cut this stump down. I'm going to create this stump by my, by my deer stand. And they're thinking that's going to be this great attraction for the fall. Well, once those deer eat that back 50% or more for two years in a row, it kills the stump. It kills the regeneration. So unless you're doing a lot of it and a lot of volume, and I've seen a 40 acre hardwood stand up near a deer yard near Rock, Michigan, in the UP of Michigan, where deer were yarding in there. They actually ate that entire 40 acres down two years in a row. And three years later, they're just sand and ferns and nothing growing except for a few pines. So you really want to make sure if you're making cuttings, you make a lot of them so that you're not wasting your resources with over browsing. And that will happen with those stumps. I want to produce 50 stumps in a 10 acre area, not one or two by a tree stand thinking this is going to be a great attraction. Yes, lots of nutrients. Yes, very attractive. But you're going to waste a stump if you do that. And I don't, I don't want to see you do that. So aspen regeneration, hardwood regeneration, soft maple. You can see behind me, and I'll point this out in the video, there's an ash borer. There's, we have an emerald ash borer on this, just like everywhere. I was down in eastern Ohio. We're in southwest Wisconsin. I saw it first in Michigan 10, 12 years ago. In Wisconsin, 8 to 10 years ago, where entire properties of ash are gone. But the emerald ash borer needs that older bark of a tree that's 8 to 10 years old to get into that groove and actually kill the tree. And I'll show you the D-shaped holes behind us and the chips that they make. So those trees, if you want to save those out, ash is a great... Uh, fall and winter browse for deer. You just cut those trees right now. You get that new fresh young growth. They have smooth bark till they're eight or 10 years old and that emerald ash borer can't get in. And the theory is that by the time that those grow old enough and have uh, grooves in the bark that the emerald ash borer can get in, then the emerald ash borer is already passed and you could actually have some of the only ash trees in the area if you cut them down now. And that's a great great way to produce some browse too. And box elder, box elder is a great tree for fall and winter browse. A lot of people think it's a junk tree, but that's only if you're concerned about timber value. If you actually want wildlife value, if you actually want a deer herd, if you actually want white tails on your land, then don't, please, I'm pleading with you, don't get rid of your box elders in, in, to replace them with hardwood because then you're just managing timber trees. And again, going back to in all of this, the higher the timber value, the lower the wildlife value the higher the wildlife value, the lower the timber value of your land. Think of hardwoods as a great and hard mast, even a little bit of cherry, but oak, and, um, and then also uh, hickory. Hickory, deer don't eat, squirrels love them, and, um, but chestnuts, 
great food source. Walnuts and uh, hickory, not so much, except where squirrels are concerned. But great complement to bedding area, soft mass, great complement to food plots. But either one of those cannot drive a deer herd for the entire year. Deer will just leave, and, uh, and they'll find good food somewhere else. And then hardwood regeneration can last for six months. Outstanding group of trees, whether it's box elder, poplar, aspen, ash. Those are great trees, basswood regeneration. And then finally conifers, great for creating uh, sound barriers. Great for complementing bedding area with another bedding class, a variety of trees out of those four that I mentioned. And what's the best tree to plant on your land this year? Something that provides, or cutting a tree that provides regeneration, woody regeneration for the entire season and not just for a month or two. Cover that base first. If you don't have that base covered, then you really shouldn't be worrying about planting hard mass or soft mass. Get that base covered for the entire season first, hard re regeneration, woody shrub tips, briars, then complement your food plots with soft mass, complement your bedding areas with hard mass. You'll be on the right track and then add conifers for that thermal protection, snow hindrance cover and side cover. You can see when it comes down to it, start with that base first, get that covered, and then offer some of these complementing cover, screening cover, hard mass, soft mass trees, and you'll have a great property, but it all boils back cover your base first, make sure there's enough hardwood browse on your land. You can really plan in the soft season for that and going into this fall. Your deal will be happy for it and so are your hunt and your ability to build a quality herd on your land this fall.